everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. At Chancellor Winters, Chance asks Billy if it's true Daniel was let go. Billy says he's afraid it's true. Heather was let go as well. Chance can't understand why this has happened. Billy assures him it won't end well. He has no idea what will happen to the gaming division. Chance guesses the tension isn't gone between him and Devon. Billy says it's not, but he's locked in. There's a lot going on right now, and if we don't find a replacement for Daniel, some tough decisions are going to have to be made. Like firing some really good people from the gaming division. Billy's phone dings and Chance asks, more trouble? Chance asks about Chelsea and Connor. Billy can't say much, but he feels for all three of them, Adam included. Chance grits, it must be serious. Billy muses that Connor's a good kid, and this is a lot to take on, but he's lucky to have Chelsea, who is doing everything she can to get him through this. Chance is sure taking care of her son, and dealing with Adam at the same time is a handful. Billy doesn't think Adam is handling this very well and needs to rein it in. Chance admires Billy's logic and restraint when it comes to the situation. In the club dining room, Devin wants to know why Lily thinks there's a place for Billy at the company. What's changed and why is she taking his side? Lily is being logical, that's all. Devin argues Billy was brought in to replace her while she was gone, and now she's back. Lily says he wasn't just brought in for that reason. She doesn't like Chancellor Winters becoming a war zone with two sides vying for power. If we get rid of Billy, it's going to prove to Jill that she was right to worry. It's not a move she's willing to make. Devin gets Lily's sense of loyalty to Jill. Lily reminds him she trusted her to run her company. Devin argues that regardless of how Mamie feels, no one is trying to strip her of her power. She's being paranoid. Mamie only owns a minority stake, and nothing can happen unless they say so. This is why Mamie's idea to split up the company makes sense sometimes. Lily can't believe she's still pushing for that. Her presence in the company worries me. Her power plays are not the vision I have for Chancellor Winters. Devin thinks they should try to come up with another solution then. We don't punish our colleagues just because we have a problem with them. Lily squints, are you serious right now? Did you really just say that to me? Lily wonders if Devin is accusing her of punishing Daniel and Heather because she has a problem with them. Devin is talking about Jill opposing the idea of splitting the companies because Mamie suggested it. Lily counters that he wants to get rid of Billy because he has a problem with him. Devin complains about Billy's track record. How long do you think it will take until he feels unfulfilled again? Given her history with him, he's surprised she wants to work with him at all. Lily reminds Devon that her breakup with Daniel was nothing like her breakup with Billy. They drifted apart, and she encouraged him to follow his heart and leave the company the first time. Devon argues that as fast as Jill brought him in, who's to say he won't leave just as quick? Lily has to go and will talk to Billy. Devon's sure that he'll tell her what she wants to hear. He reiterates that he doesn't think he's worth the trouble. At the Abbott house, Tracy leaves Ashley a voicemail complaining. She went up to take a bath, and now she's gone. She implores her to come home so they can figure out her memory lapses. Jack comes in with Nikki, and she asks if everything is all right. Jack says it will be. What about you? How is everything here? Tracy looks flustered. Jack asks if there have been any changes. Tracy says Ashley came home after he left. When he questions her further, she dashes off to run errands. Nikki tells Jack that Tracy is keeping something to herself. She's afraid her being there prevented her from confiding in him. Jack wants to talk about Nikki's issue. They puzzle over the strange man who bought her vodka. Nikki's sure that Jordan was behind it. Jack brought her there to slow things down. If Victor saw her right now, he'd go ballistic. Nikki complains about Jordan lurking and waiting to push her over the edge. 
Jack thinks it could have just been a man who didn't realize she was in recovery. Nikki argues, who buys the stranger a drink and takes off. Besides, how did he know vodka is her drink of choice? Jack thinks it's a good thing she's going on a trip. Nikki is now having second thoughts. She won't let Jordan drive her out of town.